Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here. And continuing my back to school slash rally, a month long celebration and exploration of my favorite campus slasher movies. Today, I want to talk to you guys about 1987's Return to Horror High. And Return to Horror High is most notable for being the big screen debut of George Clooney. Now, George Clooney's only in the movie for about 10 minutes top, so we don't get a lot of the Clooney in Return to Horror High. But what I've always liked about the movie, going all the way back to when I was a little kid and this thing played on late night cable television constantly, I was that kid who poured over the TV guide making notes of all the horror movies that played on late night cable television and Return to Horror High was a constant. <laughs> and I would watch it a lot. And I've always really liked the movie because at least the first half of it, I think, is a really entertaining, really enjoyable, funny satire on low-budget slasher movies. Now, not in the same way that Student Bodies was a satire on slasher movies. Return to Horror High is a satire on the making of low-budget slasher movies. You have the ultra-sleazy producer who's just trying to cut corners and pinch pennies and demanding that this movie have more nudity and more blood in it. You've got the pretentious director who's trying to make an art film out of a low-budget slasher movie. You've got the frustrated screenwriter whose um, vision has been taken away from him. We'll just say you've got shallow actors who will do anything to claw their way to the top. Uh, a special effects guy who really, really, really loves his job. And all their interactions, the sleazy producer who's constantly dodging actors who are wondering why have I not been paid, um, the director pulling his hair out, the screenwriter shambling around holding pages that are just constantly being torn up and ripped up in front of his face. Um, the actors in the film um, angry because they're having to work on the set and live on the set and having to endure um, really bad uh, catering. It's all really quite entertaining and a lot of fun and, and, and a nice little satire of the making of low budget slasher movies. And you kind of get <laughs> the feeling that the actors in the movie are having a really good time portraying these characters because they've really dealt with people just like this in the industry, particularly the guy who plays the producer, his name escapes me at the moment. Phenomenal performance. Great, great performance from this guy. The guy who plays the special effects makeup guy and is just hardcore about his effects. He's great. You've got a nice cast in the movie. The first half is just a whole lot of fun. The premise is that there was this massacre at this high school that happened five years ago. And now this film crew, they've shown up to shoot a film about the massacre in the abandoned high school. And um, people start disappearing one by one. Now, the movie unfortunately derails from a pretty smart, pretty funny, pretty entertaining send-up on low-budget slasher movies. And then it turns into just a low-budget slasher movie, which sucks really bad. Then it derails further in the last act with this Scooby-Doo reveal. Then it throws another twist at you at the very end, which I'm sure the filmmakers were like, oh, this is brilliant. It's not, it's kind of Blair Witch-ish a little bit, kind of, sort of. I'll leave it at that. But the movie completely derails, not once, but twice, maybe even three times over the course of about a 40, 45 minute period of time from a really smart, funny, uh, low budget slasher movie satire into a pretty st substandard low budget slasher movie and then into... Um, just really an ungodly mess. But I've always really liked the movie. I've always found it very, very entertaining. And like I said, that first half of the movie is just so much fun to watch because, I mean, you know this happened <laughs> on low-budget film sets, especially slasher movies in the 80s where the mandate was more boobs, more blood, um, the catering is going to be baloney, 
you know, sandwiches, you're going to live in a, a flea bag motel, or you, you're, you're just going to have to sort of um, rough it here on the set, you know, dealing with the casting couch. Fun, fun movie that just unfortunately goes, uh, goes sideways. But if you guys have seen Return to Horror High, please let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. Some lessons I learned from Horror High, or Return to Horror High, which even the title is odd because you would think it sounds like a sequel to a horror movie entitled Horror High. It's not. It's just Return to Horror High. Um, and these are lessons that I will take with me if I ever find myself working on a low-budget slasher movie. Lesson number one, always respect the screenwriter. Always respect the screenwriter. Lesson number two, never trust the producer. <laughs> never trust the producer. And lesson number three, the coolest people to hang out with on the set are, of course, the special effects guy or guys. So that's my review of Return to Horror High for my Back to School Slash Rally, a month-long celebration and exploration of my favorite campus slasher movies. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave the video a thumbs up until I return with lesson number, uh, what, I, I don't even know what the next lesson is at this point. I'm thinking uh, this will be next will be six. I'm pretty sure next will be lesson six in my back to school slash rally. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. I know I definitely am. So until I see you then, take care. Peace.